This is section 12 of Homer versus New Testament. Let's go down to our next section here. Crumbs from the rich man's table and whoever gives a cup of water in my name. Take a look at Odyssey 16 and 17. The goddess Athena changed Odysseus back into a poor beggar full of sores, dressed in rangy clothing and made out to be a poor beggar to the prideful suitors when Odysseus arrives in Ithaca. Telemachus tells a swineherd to take this poor beggar to town so he can beg his supper there, and whoever wants can give the man some crumbs and a cup to drink. Okay, so the context here, we're going back in time a little bit. We're in Odyssey 16 and 17. So at this point in the story, Odysseus is back in Ithaca, but he's dressed up like a poor beggar. Nobody knows who he is. Not even his son Telemachus knows who he is at this point in time. So he's being treated as such. He's a poor beggar. Okay, so he, he's not uh, noticed by anybody. He's a poor beggar indeed. Now let's take a look at Luke 16, 20 and 21. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Also Mark 9, 41, whoever shall give you a cup of water in my name shall not lose his reward. Okay, so <clears throat> this is amazing here. I want to look at some comparisons here and really pay attention to this. In the Odyssey, there was a certain beggar. In the Gospels, there was a certain beggar. In the Odyssey, this beggar had sores, wore rangy clothing, and was indeed outright hideous to look upon. In the Gospels, this beggar had sores, and indeed was outright hideous to look upon. In the Odyssey, this beggar desired to eat the crumbs that were left. In the Gospels, this beggar desired to eat the crumbs that were left or fell from the table. In the Odyssey, this beggar is to go to where the suitors are, who are the rich and powerful. In the Gospels, this beggar is said to have gone to the king's table, the rich and powerful. In the Odyssey, this beggar, more specifically, is to take whatever crumbs came from the rich man. In the Gospels, this beggar, more specifically, is to take whatever crumbs came from the rich man. In the Odyssey, this beggar is in hopes of getting a cup of water to drink. In the Gospels, Jesus says whoever gives a cup of water will not lose his reward, as both are about anyone that has compassion to give this poor beggar water will be spared in the Odyssey or will not lose his reward in the Gospels. These two are, are just so identical, it goes without saying. It really is. I mean, it, it just, once you understand what's going on and you're able to grasp that first domino then it just starts toppling over it's built on sand and not to be ironic here but it's built on sand and it just all crumbles down and in this same story we also find in uh the same book and story when in Ithaca there was a famous poor beggar now this guy wasn't dressed up like a poor beggar he actually was a poor beggar of Ithaca and his name was Iris I-R-U-S in our language and when Odysseus comes back as a poor beggar, the prideful suitors, in essence, forced Odysseus to fight this man, Iris, the, the homeless beggar. Okay, and Odysseus, of course, win this fight. But what's interesting here is this famed poor beggar's name is Iris, I-R-U-S. What's the name of the poor beggar in the gospel tale, especially Luke 16? Lazarus. The same three letters are identical, R-U-S. Say it out loud, Lazarus, Iris. There is some very good evidence that this Lazarus name impartially came from this famous poor beggar in the uh, in the Odyssey tale in Iris. Absolutely amazing. Now our next section here, anointed linen cloth and long white robe. Take a look at Odyssey 18. They washed the body of Patroclus, anointed it with oil, and closed its wounds with ointment. Then they covered it with a linen cloth from head to foot, and over this they laid a fair white robe. Thus all night long did the Myrmidons gather around Achilles to mourn Patroclus. Okay, so this is going back in time a little bit, looking at the event that happened in the Trojan War when Patroclus was killed. Okay, so they washed the body of Patroclus, they anointed him with oil, and then they covered it with a linen cloth from head to foot, and then they mourned Patroclus. Okay, this is the aftermath of Patroclus' death. Take a look at some verses from the Gospels. Mark 16, 1, after Jesus' death, they might come anoint him. 
Matthew 27, 59, after Jesus' death. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Revelation 6, 11, a good time after Jesus' death. White robes were given unto every one of them. John 16, 22, just before Jesus' death. Now is the time of grief. Now, what I want to do here is take a look at a couple comparisons. This all has to do with after the death of Jesus, just like after the death of Patroclus. So let's look at the uh, gospel tell here. After Jesus died, the women came to wash and anoint his body. After Patroclus died, they came to wash and anoint his body. After Jesus died, he had his body wrapped in a clean linen cloth. After Patroclus died, he was wrapped in a clean linen cloth. After Jesus died through a revelation, all are given white robes. After Patroclus died, they laid a fair white robe over his body. When Jesus foretold his death, he said it is now a time of grief. When Patroclus suffered his death, the Myrmidons and Achilles were in great grief. And again, guys, absolutely incredible all the way through. Let's go down to the next section here. Pigs drown in the waters. Odyssey 10. Odysseus and his men come to the land of Aea, and they met a witch, the goddess Circe. Circe would then play them as fools because she believed they were there to trick her. So she cast a spell on them, turning them into pigs. Then in Odyssey 12, these men that were turned into pigs all drowned in the depth of the waters. Take a look at Matthew 8, 31-32. And the demons begged him, saying, If you are going to cast us out, send us into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. And they came out and went into the pigs. And behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. Let's look at three comparisons between the stories. And this is really got the act of mimesis even more so than most. Let's take a look at these three comparisons first. In the Odyssey, Circe cast a spell on the men. In the Gospel tell, Jesus cast the demons out of the men. In the Odyssey, Circe turned them into pigs. In the Gospel tell, Jesus cast the demons into the pigs. In the Odyssey, these men who were pigs would all drown in the waters. In the Gospel tell, these pigs would all drown in the water. This is, of course, I'm not even going to debate what the story didn't come from this source from the Odyssey. That that it, that should become very obvious to the to the listener or the reader. But what I don't want you to not see is is the the act of mimesis. Notice how Circe casts a spell on the men, turning them into pigs. That's a negative. Jesus does a positive. He casts a spell or casts the demons out of the men. So he's saving the man. Circe is hurting the men. So that's the act of mimesis. Our character did better because it's a positive. He cast them out of the men. But Circe casts them into the men, which is a negative. So it's the act of mimesis here. But the stories are, are so identical, guys. You, you, the, 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 the demons are cast into the pigs. Uh, these in the, in the gospel, Cersei uh, uh, casts a spell on the men, turning them into pigs. Um, it, these these men that were pigs drowned in the waters, and just like the, the pigs drowned in the waters in the gospel tell. Very, very easy to see. Go down here, next section, Generation of Vipers. Matthew 34, 24. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, it is only by Beelzebub. Matthew 34, 34. You brood of vipers, how can you that are evil say anything good? Take a look at Odyssey 23. The nurse here, Goliath, tells Odysseus' wife, Penelope, that Odysseus is indeed back, and he had hid himself as a poor beggar so he could pay those evil vipers, the suitors, back in kind. So this goes back to what we were saying earlier. When you understand that the Pharisees and Jewish leaders were tailored off of the uh, suitors from the Odyssey, it, it all just starts to make sense, and it becomes crystal clear. Here, it even goes one step further, because the same Greek word is used. In Matthew 34, 34, Jesus calls him a brood of vipers, you know, and just like Odysseus calls these suitors in Odyssey 23, vipers. 
Same exact word is used. So this anti-Semitism you see, Gospel Matthew is probably the worst at it. The anti-Semitism you see is derived from the hatred of the suitors in the Odyssey account. Same exact thing. Um, it is absolutely remarkable. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this segment. So please turn to the other side. We will continue over there.